Hi, this is Charlie and I've recorded a video to help us uh, share understanding about how we create a new document from scratch in DocuSign. There's plenty of documentation on the DocuSign website and you can find it here underneath DocuSign.com support and downloads. There's the Docu DocuSign service user guide, power form user guide, uh, account administration reference, it goes, the list goes on, and there's plenty of other PDF quick start guides, etc. Um, but I decided to put together a video just for us uh, so that we could look at some of the tips and tricks that I've uh, put together or, or that I've uncovered as I began working with DocuSign. So without uh, too much more preamble, let's just go out and grab a PDF that we can pull into DocuSign. So I'm signed in, if you notice, to the uh, demo.docusign.net account because I want to be able to do work in an account that won't impact our production environment. It's always best to work in here and then move our work to our production environment on the NA2 server. So we'll talk more about that in a separate video which I've recorded uh, but for today's work, let's talk about creating a new power form. But first, we need to create a new template. So let's create a template by selecting that drop down to template. And then the first thing we need to do, or that I recommend doing, is adding a document. And I have uh, put out onto the uh, iDrive, a location where we're storing documents about the ELS project, and there is a folder called Alternate Payment. Um, I asked uh, our FBO office uh, contract manager, Saul, to provide us with a, a sample invoice that we could take in and begin working with. He provided me a PDF, which is great because that's the sort of file that we need to work with when we do work with DocuSign. So, Let's open this and pull it into our system. And um, then you can see here that it's asking us if we would like to choose another document. Uh, but no, for us right now, this is the only document that we need. So we're just going to say done. OK, it's pulled in this document. And I took a, a little bit of time in, in, in Adobe before uh, pulling in this invoice. When Saul first sent it to me, it had actual bill to information, who it was sent to the attention of, the invoice number, uh, invoice process date. All of these fields had referential information that was an, from an actual invoice. I went into Adobe and erased all of that. So I prepared a little bit so that we could record this video a little bit quicker. So having done that, I began noticing that I have a lot of areas that I'd like to add some data fields to, and that's great. But the first thing we need to do is, before we can go to that step, is to assign roles. Um, for this particular project, we know that we're going to have a contract manager involved. And we know that we're going to have a licensee involved. Or the person who is taking care of billing. So we could change this role to billing contact and add that signer. Okay? And you'll notice now that I've added uh, at least one recipient, I now have all of these tags that have popped up on the back. Well, great. That means we can begin applying these tags. But first, what we need to determine is which user goes first. And we're going to have the billing, the contract manager fill out what's on the invoice so that it can be sent to the billing contact person. In production, once we go live, this will happen automatically, and the contract manager won't actually have to fill this work out manually. It'll be part of the, uh, the ongoing application, the automation that's going to take care of that. But just for the practices of getting started, this is what we've decided to do. So let's click Done. And now you'll notice that we have this uh, interface to work with. And you'll notice that there are two types of tags, those that are standard and those that are custom. I've created some custom tags that we've used for the FRAP FRED Concept Auto Finish, our first document that we converted to DocuSign. Um, and these are the 56 fields that are required for integration to create 
an agreement. Today we're not creating an agreement, but we do want to be able to take information that was part of the agreement and make it part of the invoice. And so for that reason, the billing first name is important to have. The billing last name is important to have. And the billing address is going to make sense that we would like to include that. And billing address too allows us to provide some secondary level of information. And then the billing city, of course. And notice that we can resize these. And of course, we'll, with billing city, we're going to want a zip code. And we can place and drag and drop that here. Now, we haven't given ourselves space to put a zip code, sorry, a state. So I'm going to squeeze down this second address a little bit and move this field over, which is city, so that I can move over state, or sorry, zip, cancel. And in between city and zip, I'm going to want to put state. Now you'll notice that state is a drop-down box. It has all of the states that we are integrating with with IPP. So that's good. We're all ready to go there. And as you need room, you can move things around a bit. And we could also choose to select and drag and move all of these over. And I'm moving these over with my arrow key. And um, there's other features that we can help us organize these components and you'll see I'm, I'm using them to align things in a, a bit more aesthetic manner and now we've got things a bit more lined up and it's a bit more functional for us to use so we have billing address to city state and zip and now we also need if we have a particular organization which is in a foreign country we'll need to add a checkbox so that the country drop-down will appear. Along with the country drop-down, we usually provide a billing address 3. Uh, we'll, we'll, st we'll stop here with uh, billing address 2 for the moment, um, and we'll come back to the billing address 3 component. It may not be necessary. So, We've made some progress, and it's a good idea to save our changes. I notice here that it, it asks me for a template name. So since I've already created this template once, I want to give it a, a different name. I called it Invoice, so I'm going to call this Demo Invoice, so that I don't overwrite the instance that is already there. I want to make sure that I can share it with everyone, or if I wanted to, I could just sh choose specific people that I wanted to be able to, to view. So that's easy to do. Now everyone is selected, and I've selected it here as well. So either way, the everyone group or selecting all the members is a way for you to determine who you want to share it with. I declined to make it a, uh, a, a password-protected template. And now we're moving on. So notice that I don't have, when you go through these 55, 56 fields, 56 I believe, I do not have an invoice number. Okay? That's okay. What we'll do is we'll take a standard field and we'll take a label called a data field or a tag called a data field and we'll drop it. And then we'll go ahead and give it a sensible name like invoice number. And we'll click apply. We don't want to save more custom fields un until we're really sure that these are fields that we want to stick around. So since we're just in demo mode, let's keep our custom field list clean by only including things which we know we're going to have proven to be required. So right now let's just use invoice as a temporary field that we're using just on this form. Now we need additional standard fields called a uh, subscription fee and we're going to again drag and drop a, a field and then let's give it a sensible name and let's call it subscription fee. Notice that I've kept the two words together so that when these titles are passed over to the database 
um, our our database doesn't have to data going to our database doesn't need to be massaged by removing these blank spaces. So we're going to go ahead and click apply. And then we're going to pick out subscription period. And I happen to know that subscription period is driven by two dates. So what I'll do here is I'll take a date field called subscription period start. And rather than the tooltip being text, I'm going to make it date. And I'm going to make the mask be date. Now this is going to be a date box, which is going to accept things in a, in a formatted date, uh, in, a, in, a, in a formatted date mask, so that people will be able to enter a 8-character or 10-character date field. And I click Apply. And then, that's great, I have one that is called Start Date. Why don't I just take a copy of this and paste it, and then I can easily go in and instead of this being subscription period start, I can just name it subscription period end. It's already a date uh, that mask, and so I don't have to make that change, and I can click apply. Now I have a due date. I can click paste again, and then I can go ahead and make this, since it's also another date range, is instead of calling it subscription period, is call this date due. And it is a date. I don't have to insert that. And it's already a mask of date. So I can just click that and, we're, and I'm done with all of those fields rather rapidly. Next, I, have a, I need a field called amount. I don't have an amount number in my custom list. We calculated amounts on the agreement on the back end. However, I can add a data field which is called amount by just dragging over a data field and typing in amount. The tooltip is going to be amount and the mask is going to be a number. In other words, I don't want to be able to type any text in here, only numeric values. I'm going to go ahead and click apply. Now I need an invoice total to equal to some amount. Well, I can take this field, but actually what I would like is this is a data field where I'm going to enter a value. I am thinking that I'm going to make this invoice total amount a formula so that it will mirror what is in the amount field by adding a formula. So I drag this from the formula selection here and let's go into the formula and we're going to say, let's give this a sensible name like total amount, just like the label on the form. And in a formula, you merely just click the field you want to, to have uh, operate on. And I could take amount. And if I wanted to, I could add this to another amount, um, make multiply this by a value, etc. in this formula location by just typing the characters, etc or multiply, etc. But since we just need to mirror what is in the, uh, the box above, I'm just going to say it's equal to amount. And I'm going to round it to two decimal places. And click Apply. So, without too much work, we've rapidly put together a, a form. And we've, uh, we haven't tested it out. Uh, but we have all of the basic fields that we'll need. Oh, except for these two fields here. Look, we forgot invoice process date. I can copy this field and paste it. And go ahead and call this invoice process date. And then agreement number. So we have also need an agreement number. So we can go ahead and go to our standard fields and click down a data field and bring it over and call this agreement number. Click apply. Oh, and we've also missed who this is going to the attention of. Well, we know that we're billing it to this person 
Now, on second thought, I think that these two fields really need to come down here, and that the bill to would have been better served by using company. And so that's the great thing about DocuSign is just being able to make changes on the fly once you understand your form better as you populate it. And that's a, just a, a, a real honest-to-goodness, real-life scenario of how I realized I needed to make something different, and I did it on the fly. So this document is ready for us to review and get some feedback on before we proceed any further with any more calculation being added or any other uh, without too much more work being done on on uh, on making the perfect form. It's a good idea to get feedback right away. Okay? And that's all this video is going to have.